Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover deploying to Fly.io. Now we're going to be deploying a Rails app here. We're going to be using their, their free Postgres database along with a free volume. Now that is a bit in air quotes. Essentially the way that they handle free Postgres databases is they gave you three gigabytes of uh, volume storage for free. We are also going to be using the volume storage for our uh, active storage for images and stuff. So you are going to be sh sharing that space just as a heads up. And it's not technically like a hosted Postgres thing. It just kind of exists inside of this persistent storage. Now that does mean that if you restart the app, you'll still have your data. That's fine. Uh, but of course, if you'd like that extra level of redundancy and availability, I think their first tier gives you two nodes for the production and that that two nodes should uh, according to them increase the availability and you'll have data redundancy so if one fails your database isn't completely gone so that's just something to note now you don't have to use postgres either they say you can also use sqlite using the same strategy but we're going to be using postgres for this okay so here's what we need to do we need to create a rails app so hopefully i've done that already i haven't i'm going to type rails new video and just create a blank rails app uh, once we create the Rails app, we're going to very quickly set up something where we can add images to a post. Nothing fancy. This is just a proof of concept. That'll take maybe five minutes. We then have to deploy the app, which will take maybe two minutes. And then we'll add in the storage for the volumes, which will take another two minutes, maybe. So let's CD into our video. In here, we're going to run a code dot, open this up in VS Code, and then we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of all of this because it's spoilers. And then we'll just hit Control L here. Okay, so first things first, rails active underscore storage colon install. Let's add active storage so you can see how to store videos and images on these volumes. Next, let's do a rails g scaffold posts. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text. We'll add in the image manually. Next, let's do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate our database. And then we'll do a rails s to start the server so we can test this in a local version. We'll go ahead and we'll refresh. Come into your config, your routes.rb. In here, we'll do a root for the posts controller index action. That way, the home page is the index page of the posts, so we can see all the posts. Next, we'll come into app models post.rb. In here, we'll just do has one attached image. That gives us the access to the image. Next, let's go into the controllers and the post controller in here at the bottom after the body and the post params, we'll do a comma colon image that allows us to pass the image as a parameter to the controller. That means in our views, we need to add in the ability to upload an image in here. We'll grab the body tag in the div, the entire thing, control C, enter, enter, control V, tab this back over, change this body to a image. And then for this one, we want this to be a form.file underscore field colon image. And then we'll close out this Ruby code and get rid of this extra percent symbol. We can come over here. We can click on new post. You can already see that, but we do want to add this to the show page. So inside of views, posts, underscore post.html.erb, we want to copy, uh, not really copy the body. We'll just do a regular old image tag with some Ruby code, image underscore tag, Grab the post.image, comma, we'll give it a width of 300 pixels. And then we'll do this uh, only if the post.image.attached question mark, which is just going to check if there is an image uploaded, then we want to display it in this image tag. Otherwise, we aren't going to do anything. We'll give this a title of test, a body of case. We'll choose a file. I'll choose my thumbnail from Monday. Click Create Post. We now have an image. It, it's looking like it's been resized to this size. The CSS is resizing it, but the actual image is the full size image. If you want to handle the resizing, I'd suggest looking up an active storage tutorial where you do like a thumbnail method in your post and then you use like VIPs to resize. I think there's one even on my channel that covers that in Rails 7. But I digress. This is now the application we want to push to the production, deployment, whatever you want to call it, Fly.io thing. So to do that, we need to stop the server, hit F11 to full screen, control L to clear the console, run a fly launch. Now, if your fly command isn't working, so let's say you type fly, that doesn't work. You have uh, potentially some steps to run through. 
First, you're gonna to wanna to go to the installation page, which I'll have a link to in the video description. In there, you wanna grab the uh, fly.io install.sh file. It'll then run it for you. Hopefully, if you're on Linux, it should work just fine. Uh, however, if it doesn't work for some reason, what could be the problem is you don't have the stuff added to your bash file. So to do that, you can either do a, a sudo nano and then open up your dot profile, or you can use vim. I guess in this case, I've already typed nam nano. So let's go ahead and let's just use nano. Once you're in here, you're gonna wanna go to the bottom of this and all the way at the bottom right here, you wanna add these two lines. The first one is to export your fly CTL install equal to inside quotes slash home slash and then whatever your username is. Don't put Dean here unless your username is Dean, which would be a little weird, but whatever floats your boat slash dot fly IO. Your second line will be your export path equals and then inside of quotes dollar sign fly CTL underscore install slash bin colon dollar sign path and quotes. Hit control O if you're inside of your um, nano and then hit, uh, what is it? Control O, control enter, I think. And then you should be good to save it. In my case, I'm gonna control X and then N and then you're good to go. If you're in Vim, you wanna hit colon uh, WQ to save it. And then you're good to go. So that's done. Now you should be able to run your fly command just fine. If you can, you then want to run a fly launch. This will set you up with the getting started process. Name your application. In my case, I'm gonna name it Deanon dash blog dash video. I actually think this might need to have underscores in it and not dashes, but we'll find out in a second if it's upset. Looks like that worked. Next, we wanna create a Postgres database. This is optional. I'm gonna be using a Postgres database. I'm gonna use the development version, which is the 1X shared CPU with 256 gigs of RAM and one gigabyte disk. Looks good to me. That'll just go ahead and provision the Postgres database and the initial uh, server for us. It'll also spit out your Postgres credentials. This is your username, your password, and your host name. I'm going to be deleting this before the video goes up, so don't bother trying to hack me. I'm too smart for you. Uh, but you want to store this information inside of like a password manager or something, somewhere where it's safe, uh, because this is your key to your password or to your database. And this will go ahead and run. I'm not gonna try and fill the time. I'm just gonna edit this out and I'll see you after this is done. Okay, so that command is now done and we should be good to go. We now have the option to run fly deploy here, which will deploy this application. So let's go ahead and let's run fly deploy. It'll do some more stuff in the background. A whole bunch of stuff will scroll by on your screen. You can call in your family, tell them that you're a super cool hacker and tell them to look at the screen. Uh, but uh, I'm just gonna edit this part out as well because again, it's just more more time filling. Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and let's check out what we just did. If we come over to our Fly.io dashboard, let me full screen this, you should see under your apps that you have a free builder. You can ignore that one. You have a database. We're not gonna be touching that one and you have your uh, actual application. Open up your actual application. You'll have a host name. You can right click that, open it in a new tab and that should hopefully try to start up the app. Now the first the time you try to connect to one of these, just like with Heroku, it could take a minute uh, because it does have to open up from a cold boot uh, because they're not always running. They just kind of run whenever you try to access them. If you come over on the left side, you can see this monitoring tab. This is gonna be your Rails console where you can see stuff that's happening on the Rails server as it happens. Uh, so hopefully this will start to work as soon as things happen. I don't really know what's going on, why it's loading for so long. Didn't happen to me before when I tried to test this, but we'll see. Uh, the next thing we want to take a look at whenever that's done is going to be doing the volumes. Now for the volumes, this will allow us to upload the images, of course. So what we'll want to do is move this over to the side while it figures out what it wants to do with its life. And then we can go ahead and provision the volume down here in the console. So to do this, we do a fly. I guess I have to hit F11 because it's being weird again. Fly volumes and I think create. Oops. And then we want to give this a name. Uh, I guess we'll do DNN dash log dash video dash data maybe. And then we'll come down to Denver. Uh, this is the one that needs to be underscores. So let's do that. We'll just change all of these to underscores real quick. There we go. And just make sure you remember what you call it. So in this case, I'm gonna just go ahead and copy that, come down to Denver, hit enter, 
and we should now be good to go. We have our name right here. Let's try to get started. So the first thing we want to do is come down to our fly.toml. And then at the bottom here, we want to add two lines, which are listed in the uh, volumes doc. So we come down here and we find the using the volumes. I guess it's three lines technically. We'll tab this over and then we want to grab the name of our volume and paste that in here for the source right here. And then our destination, in this case, it's telling us slash data. We're just gonna leave that and I'll show you how to attach to the slash data. What we do is we come over to our Explorer. We come over to our, uh, what is it? Our config and our storage.yaml and you'll never believe it. Inside of the local section, we grab this storage and we change it to slash data. And that's pretty much it. You can of course do a production version because you're probably gonna be pushing to production, etc. But in this case, we're just going to use something like this so you can see how this works. Uh, and then once that's done, we should then be good to just run another fly deploy. Uh, but first, I want to show you what breaks here. So hopefully this will actually start up. Let me try to uh, access this and see what's going on. We'll come, let me come over here and maybe try to put the shields down for this. Maybe we'll open this up in, I don't know, Microsoft Edge. We'll see if Microsoft Edge, I don't want to use your recommended settings, go away. Be happy I'm opening you at all. Okay, there we go. I guess it's just cached or DNS cached to the last time when I made this. So we got the, the thing working now. Let's come in here and let's click new post. Give it a test and a case. We'll come in here to pictures, I guess, uh, or maybe into turbo. We'll grab this turbo thumbnail, click create post. We now have the thumbnail here. What I want to do now is uh, we'll leave the edge open and we'll just move Brave over here because it's kind of being annoying. Let's open up our terminal and we'll do a fly restart dnn dash blog dash video. And that should force it to restart. And now if we come over here, if we continue to refresh through the restart, which we can see in our console here, after this restart is done, uh, which it should be running right now. Hopefully I can get to it in time. Yep, looks good. It's still running, so it's still restarting. Once this is done though, we should then be good to refresh and still have our image here. This wouldn't work if we didn't have it mounted properly as far as I can tell. Uh, so this should be working just fine. The only other thing to be aware of is you'll wanna make sure this works in your local version. Uh, because you are changing where your local version uh, stores its files. So let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S. You can see my terminal is being really weird again. Let's come over to localhost port 3000. We'll see the image here is now broken in localhost port 3000 because that slash data directory doesn't exist. Let's try a test, a case, and let's choose a file. Click create post. We don't have the permission to access this uh, make dir at slash data. So let's go ahead and stop the server. Let me just uh, do a not best practice and let me do a make dir for uh, slash data uh, just to sudo make dir slash data and then we'll do a sudo chmod 777 slash data. You can of course change this. Again, I would recommend making like a production block here, something like this and making like a, a production block or whatever and setting it up properly that way and leaving this one as your storage. That way you can still test stuff, uh, but you know, it is what it is. This is how we're setting it up right now. It's ultimately gonna come down to however you wanna set this up. Uh, but if we set this up correctly, we should now be able to say Rails S and we should be able to restart the server, test case, choose file, grab this, uh, oops, choose file and then click create post and we can now create a post and it should if we stop the server and cd2 slash um what is it uh, slash or i guess we can just do a ll at slash data we should now see our stuff inside of slash data slash ne slash nj and there is the image i'm assuming located in our roots so that's sort of how all of that stuff works and i'll leave it to you to figure out how you want to organize it all um, but as you can see, it is working at the remote server and that's the important part. And I believe it's entirely free with how this is configured. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. 
and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next video.